I have a question. Um, basically, you're saying that the government could issue as much money as it wants. Uh, my question is, I was under the understanding that if the government didn't have enough money, uh, it borrowed the difference. And as a result of the borrowing, it incurred uh, a debt which had an interest payment. And, and the reality is that the government has a huge uh, debt, and the uh, servicing of that interest is a very significant portion of the annual uh, budget. And I don't see where your explanation uh, it doesn't seem to uh, uh, agree with um, the power of the government to issue money. I assume you're almost saying debt free. Yeah. Um. Let me, I don't want to quibble too much with this, but issue as, as much as it wants is a little bit different from what I was saying. Okay, it can't run out of its own currency, um, but uh, I gave the example of a, uh, things not being for sale in the domestic currency. So it takes two to tango, okay? If there are unemployed people who want jobs, the government can hire them. Okay? If there's nobody who wants a job, the government can offer jobs and it's not going to be able to spin the money into existence. Okay? So that, that's a, a minor little quote. Now, when the government spends, it credits a bank account and credits the reserves of that bank. That is a government debt. Okay? Currency is a government debt. Okay? So all of these credits the government is making whether it's an electronic entry or issuing a tally stick to you, the government is in debt. All money things are debts of their issuers. Okay. The difference is that these are non-interest paying debts. So currency is government debt, but we don't normally include it in our figure of 15 trillion or whatever the, the outstanding uh, bonds are because they don't pay interest. Similarly, bank reserves are a government debt, a debt of the central bank. Okay. Again, in the old days, they didn't pay any interest. They're not included as part of the measured government debt, the figures that you, that you always read about. So again, this might seem like a little quibble, but I just want to make clear. All of those credits that the government is, is giving are debt, in the same way that bonds are debt. It's just that we don't promise to pay interest on them. So why does the government issue some bonds that banks use reserves to buy or that households can use their deposits to buy? The bonds promise to pay interest. Why does the government do that? What I was explaining is the government does that to hit its overnight interest rate target. It is not a borrowing operation. In fact, the government cannot sell those bonds unless you already have government debt to buy them. You have to have currency or you have to have bank reserves or your bank has to have bank reserves to buy them. Because the only thing the government will accept in payment for the bonds that it issues is its own debt, its own IOUs. So bond sales actually don't change the amount of government debt out there. They change the form from non-interest paying to interest paying. Now, does a sovereign government need to do this? No. They never need to do this. If they're happy with a zero interest rate, they can just leave the reserves in the banking system. And you will have a zero overnight interest rate. So I realize people are very concerned about government paying interest on its debt. And as you said, it becomes a rising share of total government spending. But look at it this way. In the first place, the government doesn't have to sell any bonds. It can just leave reserves in the banking system, okay? On which the banks get zero in the old days. Now it's near zero interest. They get 25 basis points. Okay, so it doesn't have to sell them in the first place. Second place, the government can choose the interest rate that it pays. It's the sovereign issuer of the currency. 
It can sell the bonds to achieve the interest rate target that its central bank arm has set. Okay? 50 basis points now. The government chooses that interest rate. And the third point is, the government can always afford to make the interest payments. Why? Because the government makes interest payments in the same way that it does any kind of spending, by crediting a bank account. All right? And as the St. Louis Fed said, it can never run out of dollars. So if the government chose, oh, let's pay 10% on our government bonds, and let's run the debt up to $15 trillion, is there any conceivable way that the government won't be able to pay the interest on that? The answer is no. There's no conceivable way. They can always afford it. Because they make the interest payments by crediting bank accounts. Okay? Now, I'm not saying that we should have 10% interest rates. Okay? I'm not necessarily saying that we ought to sell government bonds at all. But it's a policy choice. Why does the government do it? Because your pension funds like to have government bonds in their portfolios, and they like to earn interest. Maybe it's a good public policy to sell bonds, stuff the private pension funds full of them, and pay them interest. But it's a policy choice. It's not forced by markets. It's not forced by any natural laws. We choose to do it. Okay, sorry, I, now I remember I was supposed to answer short. <laughs>